four, three. That's the wrong number. Let's do it. Yells, welcome to Garage Band Weekly for another week, the weekly show all about Garage Band and Garage Band adjacent topics. I'm your host, Pete Johns. This is Studio Live today. My goal here is to help you create record and release your best music we do that through tips tricks tutorials and live videos just like this one if that's your bag consider subscribing coming up on the show we've got a whole bunch of stuff to share we're doing a 2020 retrospective we're going to be talking about a bit about the history of garage band that should be a lot of fun and of course we've got our regular tips segments and app of the week but let's jump in to the news now the news this week has been a bit light because you know what? It's Christmas and it's been Christmas week. So we haven't had a whole lot in the way of brand new stuff. So what I thought I would talk about is what has actually happened in 2020 when it comes to GarageBand. So instead of being news of the week, it's kind of going to be news of the year because it's been a big one for GarageBand. And let's start with GarageBand for Mac, shall we? Because I don't give GarageBand for Mac enough love because I haven't used it until about, ooh, what, a month ago is when I started actually using GarageBand for Mac. Uh, let's bring it up here on the screen and take a look, see. So GarageBand for Mac for the longest time and the running joke was Patrick over at the GarageBand Guide, shout out to you, would say every time there's an update, he's like, and it's an update and it's stability fixes and bug improvements. So other way around. Other way around, St stability improvements, bug fixes. That was all that GarageBand Mac folk were getting. They weren't getting any new interfaces. They weren't getting any new features. They weren't getting new instruments. That all changed around about a month ago. The new version of GarageBand had a complete redesign moving into the new Big Sur. And this aligned with the new Mac M1s being released, which uh, we all know is uh, a cool thing because it meant people like me finally went out and bought ourselves a Mac. So... A lot of big changes happening in the GarageBand Mac world, and it really has made it exciting here in GarageBand for Mac because we've got new, new nice looking interface here, new controls, uh, and some new features as well. And I won't go into the details of them, mostly because I haven't learnt them all yet. And I'm lucky because I kind of came in just after this big update. So I will never know the old ways and the old interface. I'll always be in this version. But as I start learning more about GarageBand Mac and how powerful it is, I'm actually really super blown away that this is a free bit of software that has been around for 16 years, believe it or not. 16 years of GarageBand for Mac. It's pretty phenomenal. So uh, yeah, GarageBand Mac for the win, finally getting some love from the Apple universe and getting some updates this year. So what do you think? If you're a GarageBand Mac user, you've been impressed with the updates, you like the new version, have you updated? The other thing is the new version does require uh, Mac OS Big Sur, uh, so you do need to have the latest version to update. What do you reckon if you're using it? We'll have a little drink. Now, iOS world, <laughs> what happened for us in iOS land? Well, we had some similar sorts of changes. Let's uh, let's bring up the let's bring up GarageBand here in iOS. Boom, 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 boom. Here's one I prepared earlier. That's the Mac version. We need to. Uh, we need to shimmy that one on down, like so, and behind here, and behind here, is not there. <laughs> so, uh, what, what, what that should show, oh, it is, it is displaying, oh, I've got to press this button. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, folks, there we go. That is better, and yes, I'm using AirPlay, we'll plug in so that we get better quality sound, and we'll turn it off. If you saw my stream yesterday, this is just a continuation from that, where I just uh, seemed to struggle. Every time I pressed something, I seemed to struggle big time, excuse me. Uh, it's just that time of the year. It's been a long year, hasn't it, folks? Uh, at least that has for me. Uh, let's come over here. So, GarageBand for iOS. Here's the cool thing. Well, is it cool? Maybe. Since version 2.1, and especially version 2.2, we haven't had a whole lot in the way of interface updates. Now, why is that good? Well, for someone like me who creates GarageBand tutorials, it's very good because I looked last night and I've been doing a GarageBand Quick Jam series. There's 76 episodes, search it online, Pete John's GarageBand Quick Jams, and it started four years ago. So December 24th, 2017. Now, all of the things that I said about the keyboard, about the drums, everything is still relevant because there hasn't been a complete overhaul. We were on 2.1 then, we're only on 2.3.10 now. So... For all the changes there have been, 
the non-changes have actually been just as helpful, if not perhaps a little more. So what we have got though, is we do get updated sound packs every now and then. So if we go into the sound library, you'll know that more, most recently, we had the keyboard collection sound pack that came out. And then very recently, we had the electronic drummers sound pack. Prior to that, we had things like the Vision and Verse hip hop pack there, uh, the Bass Amp Boutique, but they came out in late 2019. At least I think Vision and Verse was 2019, wasn't it? Someone can correct me on that. It doesn't have it noted here. It probably will tell us when we go to the we go to the next section where we talk a little bit about garage band history. So that's been you know the the biggest change that we've had there. We've had uh, in late 2019 we had uh, file support like additional file support with iOS 13. iOS 14 hasn't really added a whole lot here to the picture. So there's not a heap of difference here in garage band iOS. Over time, all we seem to be getting is additional sounds, a lot more new sounds. The only kind of, I guess, game changer type things we've had are things like the ability to change your top section here to actually having time. So one of the weird things is that for the longest time, we had no time ruler up here. And uh, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. So now you've actually got a time ruler. You can change it to minutes and seconds if you don't like the bars that we have there. So we'll turn that back off again. So really... Not a whole lot in the world of GarageBand iOS, but that's a good thing because if you learned it, if you've been with me for all five years of this channel and you watched the very first episodes and the very first videos I did about GarageBand, everything kind of still holds up. There's a few little interface tweaks here and there, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. Alrighty, let's, uh, <coughs> let's come back over to my notes. Um, yeah, so the sound packs, that, that was the only other thing I wanted to talk about is that we do have those new sound packs that, uh, yeah, uh, are good, but you know what we need? We haven't got the metal sound pack <laughs> and we haven't got the alt rock sound pack. Are they not the two sound packs that everyone is indeed searching for? I think so. All right, before we jump in to our next section here, where we're going to go into a bit of a feature topic, let's, uh, let's jump in and uh, say day to the folks that we have here live. Oh, my, something's beeping. Something's beeping at me. Uh, so hello to Desolate Morning. We've got Tom Rochelle here. Alex Bacchus. Uh, Mark is in the house. Hello to Nina. Uh, Benedict Stewart. Hello to you. Fallen. G'day, g'day. The Tool Matt is here. Joe Glenn. Uh, who else do I miss? Jade Starr is in the house. Uh, I say in the house too much. I was listening to bits of a show last night and I'm like, Jade Starr. Uh, Jade Starr. I do say Jade Starr too much too. Uh, no, I say in the house a lot. I'll, stop, I'll try to stop. 2021, no in the house. Uh, Stu Cash is here. Joey Help-ish. Uh, Gary Hubs. A uh, bunch of other folks uh, who I'm probably going to miss. So I apologize if I've missed you. Uh, it is not personal. Chris, Chris Blum. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We are roses. There you go. <laughs> and Jade is in her house, so it makes sense. And uh, SK Steny Latte Heights. Cool. I like it. I like some of the interesting names. Danny Broderick, thank you for being here. And you're in the carrot. Everyone is in the carrot, right? Okay, now I wanted to do something fun. I've been trying, I've been thinking about doing this video for a long time and tell me if it would be fun or if it would be a complete waste of anyone's time. I'll let you know in a moment. Because I'm intrigued with the history of GarageBand. And we've had GarageBand, especially on iOS, where I've been using GarageBand for a long time. And I kind of wanted to look through where we're at now and what's been happening. And uh, sadly, I went here to the version history that we have here in uh, in Safari. And whoop, I'm, gonna, I'm on the wrong I'm on the wrong page. Come over here. Let's zoom in there. There we go. We'll zoom it in a little bit so that we can see what's going on. Unfortunately, they removed everything before version 2.0. So you can see here we've been able to track the versions over time. But because I only started this five years ago in 2016. I don't have the versions prior to that, but I thought I would just run through quickly and just in case you're thinking, oh, what, what have you done for me lately, Apple? Well, quite a lot, it seems, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of changes, and a lot of updates that have happened over time. So why don't we jump in here and do a bit of a back in time retrospective of GarageBand iOS and the history of GarageBand. Now, before we do this, what you need to keep in mind is uh, that GarageBand 
the original version, 2004 is where GarageBand was announced. I did a recent video, recent-ish, where we actually watched the GarageBand launch from 2004. Yep, Steve Jobs was up there. John Mayer came out. They showed how it all worked. They talked in superlatives. It was all buttery smooth and whatever else they say. It was a lot of fun. So 2004, we've had GarageBand for 16 years. It wasn't until 2011 that the first version of GarageBand iOS version 1 came out for iPad only, and it cost $6.99 US. So yes, it used to cost you money to buy GarageBand. I know people forget this. iMovie, GarageBand, I paid for them all because I wanted them. I was an early adopter. Uh, and it wasn't until 2013 that we had GarageBand on the iPhone. Prior to that, it was iPad only. It was only made a universal app in 2013. And then uh, in 2017 was when GarageBand finally became free and boom, that set off the whole, everyone has GarageBand on every iOS device they ever buy and the rest, as they say, is history. But let's just take a quick stroll through history. Version 2.0, back in October 22nd, 2013. Uh, this is where the 32 track limit came in. Prior to that, it was only 16 tracks. We can record third-party music apps using InterApp Audio. So InterApp Audio, which was deprecated and is on its way out, uh, it was a brand new thing. So it was just added in. <clears throat> uh, 201, we had stability improvements. Well, yeah, that's, that's something that you're going to see a lot of. Uh, in 2014, September, iOS 8 and iCloud Drive compatibility. So prior to that, you couldn't save to iCloud Drive. So backing up your GarageBand projects was not a lot of fun. You also had MIDI over Bluetooth and you had the metronome on the control bar. So prior to that, you had to go into your settings to get to your metronome, yeah? So if you were up here, uh, let's just show down here. We'll go back to full screen mode so that we can show this. So um, yeah, prior to that, you didn't have your metronome. So there was no metronome at the top here that you could just turn off and on. You had to actually, oh, stop doing that, man. You had to actually go into your settings to turn on your metronome, which uh, would have been a pain in the backside. Uh, coming on up here, 203, 202 and 203, just more stability improvements, more stability improvements, not a lot happening through 2014. Uh, until here, 2.05, uh, added the option to purchase the GarageBand Red Loop Pack, an exclusive collection of guitar-based synth and drums in a variety of genres. Now, this is a funny one because I didn't buy this at the time and I wish I had, but to get this, you had to have bought it then and it has never come out again. It's one of the uh, the Apple Red things that happened back in the day that was the U2 Bono funded thing that supported, as you see there, 100% of proceeds will uh, go to Red's fight against AIDS. Now, I don't have these and again, the only way to get them is to actually have that. So I would love Apple to do a... Uh, well, it's not even a, it's not even special. A sixth anniversary. Uh, let's give us the red pack again because I would buy it. I would pay for it, but they've never made it available again. Oh uh, six, we had bug improvements. Oh seven, GarageBand to Apple Music Connect. Yeah, that was their, their new thing back then. Now two point one, January twentieth, twenty sixteen. This is when everything changed. So this is when GarageBand iOS took a big step up. You can see here, live loops, virtual drummer came in. We can record adjustments of touch instrument control knobs. We can create automation. Automation wasn't on there before. We can shape the sound of touch instruments uh, using EQ and processor. We didn't have EQ. We didn't have plugins and EQ back then. There was a heap of things. Bass guitar. We didn't have bass guitar rigs. Uh, we could record up to 32 tracks simultaneously. We didn't have multi-channel recording. So this is where, and this was actually, not surprisingly, this is around the time that I really got excited about GarageBand. So that it's, not a, it's not a coincidence that January 20th, 2016 was GarageBand's kind of coming of age. And then February 1st, 2016 was when Studio Live Today commenced. So it was very much off the back of this, and this is why it's pretty special to me, very much off the back of GarageBand 2.1. And some of my first videos was a series covering all of this stuff, live loops, automation, all of these 2.1 features. It was very, very cool. As we go through 2016, uh, we had some more features. We got multi-touch select. We've got AirDrop coming in on there. You can add your own custom images and songs shared to YouTube and Facebook, which they then took away. <laughs> anyway, we'll continue on here. 2.2 was the next big one because that was the birth of Alchemy. So Alchemy Synth was added to GarageBand. We actually had a sound browser where you could search and find things. And uh, it's where all the studio effects came in. So 2.2 added the all new audio recorder. Before that, do you, does anyone remember the old audio recorder that just had like the things you'd flick through and it was like telephone, fun, bullhorn, 
and the only effects you could add were like reverb and uh, reverb and delay on the master. So this is where we have things like the radio ready, the lead vocal, the pitch control, the the stereo delay. All of those only came in in 2017. Four years we've actually had those. It's kind of kind of amazing when you think about it. 2.2.1, we continue to uh, to add p- patches and uh, stabilities and improvements. 2.3 was the next iteration. Uh, and this is why I wanted to show this, because how weird is it that we had that level of development? 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Just change after change after change. From November 1 to 2017 to now, we have not got off version 2.3. We are now at version 2.3.10, and it's taken us four years, and we haven't actually got to version 2.4, despite me thinking, maybe this year, maybe this year. Anyway, we got uh, we got some new things here. We've got the sound library, so we've got new sound library packs coming in. We had our new drummers. We had the uh, world instruments that came in there. We had the beat sequencer added, and some of the most important ones. 24-bit audio resolution. So if 2.1 took us to the level where we could actually do professional recordings, 2.3 took us to the level where no longer did people using a Mac or a PC were able to look down and say, well, you know, GarageBand iOS only has 16-bit audio. You can't record professional sound with 16-bit audio. Guess what? 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. We now have the same quality. You plug your audio interface into your iPad or your iPhone or your Mac or your PC, you're recording the same quality digital audio. I thought that was pretty darn cool. Uh, 2.3.1, stability, stability. 2.3.3, we've got the Toy Box, which is still one of my favorite packs. Some, some of those toy pianos are super cool. Uh, we then got you know random updates for schoolwork, which I don't think anyone ever uses anymore. Um, the ability to see t- uh, note labels was here in 2018 more stability. Uh, we've got MIDI import in uh, 2018, 2.3.6. So we've got some more touch instrument and drummer loops, and we've got that MIDI import ability, which was cool. Uh, 2018, we've got keyboard commands. So <laughs> yep, we've only had keyboard shortcuts for a couple of years as well. We've got that weird face control for the face ID, which was bizarre. 2.3.8, so that was iOS 13. That's where we got the dark mode, the share sheet. We got file access for external drives, and we got the new Skyline Heat Hip Hop Pack. Uh, and then the next update, as you can see there, that was a big gap. We only got a point update, and it was over a year. So from September 2019 to October 2020, there are a few packs that they threw in there that they gave us. They threw us a bone, but look at this. Yeah, we only got to there. And the only difference here now is that we've got an increased time limit. We've got that new ruler option I showed before, and we can start a recording from the home screen. And 2.3.10 is where we are right now in 2020. So I just wanted to go through that because it, it's fascinating to me. And I think for many of you, you'll remember this or you'll know this or you'll relate to it. A lot of folks may have only joined the world of GarageBand in this zone here, in the 2018-2019 zone. So there's big benefits for this, as I said before, from a purely selfish standpoint. As someone who produces GarageBand videos, I don't have to update much because not much is changing. You can see in the last four years, there's been additions, but the basic fundamental core of the program hasn't changed at all. It's still the same garage band that we had back then. So what do you what do you think? Are you OG? Have you been around for the whole the whole ride? Uh, are you new to garage band? What has been your experience? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, yes, uh, so Tom, Tom says this was probably around the first time I started really messing around in GB, probably around 17. Yeah, I agree. A lot of folks did. Uh, Joey Helpy said 2016 was when I ditched the Mac for the iPad Pro. Uh, and uh, end of 2017 was the update for iOS 11 to fix this crashing issue. Yeah, there was a significant, <laughs> around the iOS 10 to 11 transition, there was significant issues. 12 to 13 had some issues, 13 to 14 had some issues. Basically, Every time there's an iOS update, they seem to have to do the stability improvements and bug fixes to stop it from crashing. <laughs> uh, hello to uh, some other folks. We've got Mori who's dropped in here. Uh, we've got, uh, who, does it, who else did I see there? RVN Toop. I'm Moses. Greetings to you all and to Janelle Mendoza. Hope you are doing well. And uh, yeah, a, a very good point. Why change what works? And here's the thing. The thing was that, they built it up. The reason I'm not super unhappy about this is that what are they going to change, right? 
They built it up from basically an idea sketch pad, and then over time they slowly added plugins and effects, external instruments, 24-bit audio, full 32-track recording capability, multi-track recording. They basically just kept upgrading it until it reached the point where you can do most of the same things that you can do on GarageBand Mac on GarageBand iOS. So why would you change that? And what are they going to change it to? What are they going to add in that's going to make it significantly better? Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, iMosa says, uh, been with it since my first iPhone 3GS. There you go. There's a blast from the past. Those, that was the first uh, curvy iPhone. Well, they were, they were curvy just by default back in the iPhone 1 and the iPhone 3G, uh, which is weird. Uh, now we're, we're back to the square. We went curvy, square, curvy, now square again. It's just like cars. Change the style every three years, so you have to buy a new one. Uh, Jay says, I remember the first garage band on iOS was so bleak, had to jailbreak to make it half useful. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty weird. Uh, the tool Matt says, uh, I would, uh, not have read that, but appreciate seeing it. Yeah. The whole ride from GB to logic, uh, and just recently to iOS for mobility. Yeah, exactly. No one would read that. And <laughs> I'm a bit sad that the version one history is not there. I'm going to have to try and dig it. If anyone finds it, uh, finds a link through the Wayback machine or archive.org. I tried before the show. I couldn't find it. So if you can find that version history, this same one here that has everything prior to version two. So prior to here, because it used to be in there. They've obviously cut it. They've truncated it in recent times because they thought, what idiot wants to know the version one to version two history? This idiot. I want to know. <laughs> Uh, Danny says watching, oh yeah, cool. So uh, yeah, and hopefully some of you are watching this going, oh, I didn't use GarageBand until very recently. And uh, that's cool. Um, uh, Maury says, uh, I have uh, I have a lot of others, Cubasis, etc. Gar GarageBand is still the cleverest. I'd probably agree with that. I think it's the easiest to get into. It's one of those things like Texas Hold'em Poker. It takes, uh, what do they say in that? It takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. I think that's the case with GarageBand iOS. You can give it to a kitty and say here, and they'll just grab beat sequencer or grab live loops and start making music within a minute. Or you can plug in an audio interface and produce an entire album uh, with professionally recorded quality sound and everything in between. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Sion says, 2018 for me, used other softwares, but really loved the portability of iOS. Here, here, uh, Mori, yeah, they need time stretching and drum pads. Potentially, yeah, that would be some, some cool things. Um, and the speculation is, will we get logic with those features on iOS? Only time will tell. Uh, I'm Moses all this time and I'm still learning. We're all still learning. I think as soon as you stop learning, you, you've kind of lost because, yeah, you need every time I do something, I learn something new. And uh, I learn from you folks as well. You tell me new things and uh, I learn cool new things. Uh, Joey made an album on the first version of GarageBand for Mac and the iPad. Both of my favorite albums. There's something about that. There's something about that. I'm kind of the same with the first EP I did in GarageBand iOS. It was in 2016, so it was around that 2.1 time. I think 2.1 had just dropped, and I started recording. And because I just started learning it and started recording with it, there was something sort of magical about that discovery and that creation process that's really hard to replicate because you tend to just twiddle knobs and dials and then see what works and see what sounds good. I think sometimes as you learn more, it can actually make your recordings worse, if that makes any sense at all, because you know too much then and you're trying to be too professional, for want of a better word. You're not experimenting enough. That's my view anyway. Uh, Mark started mid-2019. So yeah, we'd already done all the hard work for you, Mark, by the time you had it there. Uh, yeah, check Wikipedia. The history is all there. Yeah, I did. And Wikipedia does have it. You'll notice I do have the Wikipedia entry open because I was researching this prior. So yeah, you can go back and it does have uh, things about the history. This is where I confirmed, you know, the year that it was first uh, put out on, uh, on Mac and when it was first launched for iOS, but it doesn't have that version control that I wanted to do. So yeah, e either way, uh, hopefully I'll find it at some stage. Uh, alrighty, uh, <laughs> smash the like to wish away optimizing performance. Yeah, I wonder when optimizing performance was introduced, because it wasn't around in the early days, it would just crash. <laughs> so I get, I guess optimizing performance is good, because in the past, it, uh, it yeah, instead of optimizing performance, your, your garage band would just crash. And there you go, Joe Glenn, and I didn't get garage band until I came across your tutorials. And I didn't get garage band when I first used it. So it's, it's interesting to hear that. And it's good. I guess it's reassuring to hear that because the reason I, basically the reason I started this channel is GarageBand 2.1 came out. I thought it looked cool. I wanted to learn it. And I thought, 
this has a steep learning curve. Like this should be easier and there's no good guides. The manual was crappy. Uh, no one was just specifically covering mobile recording at that point, at least not in GarageBand. There was a lot of other people using a lot of other things. And I thought, yeah, I need to learn this. And as I learn it, I'm going to actually document that process. So the first the first series of videos was me learning the six new features. There's like an actual video series you can go back and find. If you search Pete John's GarageBand 2.1, you'll find me going through automation and live loops and all these new features. And you can see my editing techniques were terrible back then. So you can almost hear the cogs turning in my head and clicking over as I'm learning things. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, hello, Orchestra Eclipse is in the house. And did I see Gino Therese? Gino, my most recent uh, Patreon member. So if you would like to join the fun over at patreon.com slash Pete Johns, we have a big end of year blowout live stream happening in just two days time so or is it tomorrow it was two days time yesterday maybe tomorrow <laughs> i think it is tomorrow 30 yes yeah, tomorrow uh i think don't quote me on that it's on the patreon if you go over to patreon.com slash pete john sign up for as little as one dollar per month then you can join the fun and the party there and i'll in that show anyone who's a member at that time so you've got, you've got a day or two to, to sign up. Uh, we'll go into, we're doing, when we hit 50, I said, once we hit that 50 mark, we're going to throw all patrons' names into a hat and one's going to be drawn out and I'm going to record a song for them. So they get to choose, you know, what sort of song it is or one of their songs or an idea they've had and I'm going to record it uh, live on the channel. So that should be a lot of fun. All right, I spent a lot of time in that opening section. So why don't we, uh, why don't we jump over here and go to our next section? Uh, in fact, I think I saw some questions. <laughs> if you did ask a question, I think I saw some way up the top. I'll go and try and find them. Uh, so yes, here we go. Uh, Melissa Perkins had a question. Do you use auto-tune in GarageBand Mac OS? I haven't actually found where auto-tune is in Mac OS. So I probably will, Melissa. And in fact, it's a really good segue because in uh, an hour and a half, so no, two, two and a half hours. So two hours after the end of this show, I'll be coming back. I'm doing a double header today because I have to finish my song called Murdering Time, which is this one here. Uh, let's just see if it's set up to play. Uh, I'll turn it up. Only sense is the darkness. So there's my demo recording. And yeah, we'll be coming back to this. So maybe we'll indeed play around with that. So uh, jump onto that live stream. Uh, that'll be happening in, as I say, two hours after the end of this one, after Jade and after Joey. Uh, I'll be coming back for a second round, a second helping. And uh, we'll be recording in Mac OS for only the second ever time. And we'll be taking that demo and uh, stretching it out and turning it into a finished track as best we can because <laughs> it needs to be done by the end of December. And this is kind of the last day I have for that. So we'll see how it goes. And yes, Jade, if you want to drum on it, <laughs> If you want to do your live thing, uh, let me know. Uh, Kyle TV had a question here. How do I turn on velocity sensitivity slider in keyboards on GarageBand iOS? Now, this one, I need to revisit velocity because it's an interesting one. If we come back over here and out of there and bring back up this one, boom. Um, it's different in iPad versus iPhone. And it's different with different types because velocity sensitivity, you can turn on and off. If you're on an iPhone, if you're on an iPad, there's a little slider there, which is a bit weird. So if we come in here and we'll just throw the classical grand on here. Uh, is this a bad example? I think so, because... Yeah, so if we go to our settings here, you can go to track settings and you can go to, no, let's see, is it recording? No, where, where am I going to? I've lost it. I, I need to revisit it. I, I've forgotten is the, is the honest answer here. Uh, maybe I need to select a different instrument. There's definitely ones where you've got a velocity slider. And why can't I find it now? I don't know. So yeah, it's one of those things I'm doing it live, but there are differences in velocity. One you can actually adjust and one has touch sensitivity and one you come in here to your track settings. And I thought in the past there was velocity sensitivity here in the track settings, but obviously I'm missing something here uh, because I'm just kind of doing it on the fly. So uh, hold that thought. I will return and uh, talk about that in a future video very soon because I do get questions about it and it is super gosh darn confusing. Uh, if you do have any more questions, please throw them in the chat and uh, we will get to those uh, after we go into our next section. I think they're on alchemy. Yeah, maybe it is on the alchemy, um, the alchemy sense as well. 
<laughs> Am I playing drums on that? Maybe. It, it needs to be done today, Jade. So if you're playing drums on it, you'll have to do it during the show. I'll uh, After this one, I'll send you the scratch track. I'll send you the demo. And if you want to, you may. It's uh, up to you. All righty. Uh, <laughs> Danny says, uh, through watching Pete, Jade and Doug, now I'm broke. Yeah, I apologize for that. I know. And I've got a video coming out in two days' time, which is my top 10 paid apps of 2020. So uh, get your wallets and your purse strings ready. No, you don't have to buy. You can do so much for free. I did my, the reason I did my free one first is I wanted to get the free stuff out there. And uh, yeah, now I'm just going to cover the paid apps if you do want to, uh, if you do want to go to the next level. Alrighty, I'm going to skip, because that was such a big rant, we're not going to have a separate rant of the week because my rant of the week was the history of GarageBand. We, we kind of bundled it all into one. But I did notice something pretty cool that I've been playing around with this week. And I'm going to make it my tip of the week here. I haven't perfected it yet. If you want to find out more information, you'll have to come along to the next stream in a couple of hours' time. But what I did discover is that now that I did it, it's now not working. So, you know, typically. So what I did is this project here in GarageBand, this is actually in... My, uh, my iCloud Drive. So I saved it here in iCloud Drive in just my Studio Live Today folder, just as a bit of a test here. And this is actually an exported project from GarageBand Mac. So you may be aware that you can export, you can save a project and export it as GarageBand Mac, and then you can make changes. Now I was gonna then go, oh, how do I then take this project and bring it back into Mac? Something weird and surprising happened, which was that when I opened up GarageBand on Mac, it actually brought in a track that I've been working on. Now I've deleted it since, which was silly because I should have been able to show you, but I had this, this project saved here and because it was saved on iCloud Drive and I opened it in, I opened the exported version, it then somehow registered that I'd added a track to it and then brought it back in. So I don't know if this is going to work again this time, but what I'm going to do is let's just try this whole thing again. What we'll do is we'll save it out as a GarageBand iOS project with a different name uh, in fact, let's just save this. We'll do a save as. This is all very experimental. Yeah, but if it works, it could be very fun for a lot of folks. Uh, so we're in iCloud Drive. We're in the Studio Live Today folder, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll go in there. Studio Live Today folder. There's MurderingTime.band. We'll go Murdering Time 2 and we'll save it in here. So that's the GarageBand Mac project. It's saved as Murdering Time 2. It's in my iCloud Drive. I'm now going to share it. Uh, and I'm going to go Project to GarageBand for iOS. I'm going to save it in that same folder, but I'm going to put iOS after it. So it's in iCloud Drive, it's in my Studio Live Today folder, and it's called Murdering Time 2 iOS. We're going to hit save. So that's saved in there. Well, it's, it's, it's bouncing it, because what it actually does is it bounces this all down to a stereo track. So when you go over and open it in iOS, it's not going to give you all these tracks, because some of the Mac options aren't available in iOS. It's going to give you a drop, a stereo mix down of these tracks. So that seems to be done now. Let's switch over to the iPad and we'll bring that one up here. So now we're here in the iPad. We'll forget about this one. We'll come out of there. Now what we should find in here is if it's updated, <laughs> and this is always the test, is to whether it actually updates it in real time because it's got to go away and sort of upload and iCloud's not always super immediate and responsive. Uh, here it is. There you go. Okay. I take it back. Sorry, Apple, uh, but there you go. And you can see here, it's got the little cloud icon to download. So I've got to do this next to it. I'm going to tap on that one and it's going to download this murdering time to iOS version. Here it is. So here's the project. And if we come in here and play this, cool. So it's actually playing through there as intended. So what we can now do, let's just experiment. Let's just see if we add, and we'll, we'll keep it simple here for GarageBand. We'll just add something like the electric piano, something I know that's going to be sort of across both things. And uh, we'll just we'll just record a little track in here. And I want to see, I'm intrigued to see whether this goes across and saves in to the Mac project. So we'll hit record on here. We'll get ready to play. Two, four. Not a well-played part, but we just wanted to uh, use this as a bit of a test run. So we'll come out of there. 
There is our electric piano part. Um, now, the one that it did work for was a drummer track. So for whatever reason, I added a drummer and it worked fine. So let's come in here and do that as well. We'll just add more drummers and we'll throw uh, Duncan because why not? Uh, go Duncan. Go Duncan. That doesn't, that doesn't sound bad, does it? Not what I was thinking at all for this song, but it kind of drives it along. Anyway, so we've got those tracks in here. Let's save out of this one now. So we'll hit the end button. Saving in. See how it's got the cloud icon now? Uploading cloud icon. So we'll let this upload. Boom, it's done. It's finished uploading. Let's jump back over to GarageBand Mac. <laughs> that was a weird transition. Okay. And we'll, uh, we'll close out of this file. So we'll come here, we'll close. And what we'll do is we will uh, we'll go to, how do I go to open open an existing project? Here we go. So we are in iCloud and we are going to go to Studio Live today. And so we can see here, we've got the dot band, the iOS dot band project there. We've got the original murdering time. Now I'm pretty sure I just opened the Mac version and it found the additional stuff in iOS. So let's try that first. We'll hit open. Look at that. It worked. New tracks have been added to this project by GarageBand iOS. Do you want to import these new tracks? Let's do it. Let's hit import. Uh, import successful. Changes were done. Look at that. I know. I'm going to get excited. Watch out. I'm about to get excited because this, this is what I've been wanting. Now, GarageBand Mac people, can you tell me? Has this been a feature that's been around forever and I just hadn't found it yet? I haven't seen anyone talking about this, but that doesn't mean it's not out there because I haven't been looking at a lot of Mac stuff in the past. But this is super cool because here we've actually brought this in and we've got these two tracks, this electric piano and this Duncan, we've got actually in here in our project. So if we play these, look, these are what we just recorded on the iPad. And if we turn up the volume, it'll help. Right? Bring it back into our track. So this is exactly what I want, yeah. I want to be able to, where I want to, like I'm still going to use GarageBand. I know a lot of people are worried. They're like, Pete, you're abandoning iOS. No way. I'm still using iOS. But to know that I can create a track, I can record a demo in Mac, I can then export it into iCloud, grab it on my iPhone, walk out the door, add in a bunch of tracks, and then bring it back over, that's exactly what I wanted. And then I can mix in those tracks back into my project. So it's not gonna be the complete thing. Like you can't mix on the go like you can in iOS only, but you know, you ever do that where you're just like, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna record a few synth parts. I'm gonna try and record uh, you know, a few other virtual instruments, maybe some backing vocals, and then you wanna bring them back. I thought I would have to like do a whole bunch of copying and pasting and everything going on. No, apparently this works. So there you go. Let me know, uh, again, Garage Band Mac folks, let me know, is this a is this just an obvious thing? Are you like, duh? Or is this something that's exciting for you too? Because for me, it's it's a game changer. Like this is cool. This is exactly what I wanted it to be able to do. And this will make me use GarageBand Mac more. If it was a pure standalone thing that I couldn't use integrated with GarageBand iOS, I probably wouldn't use it much. Now that I know this and now that I know I can do this, it's going to be there. So I'll have to create a video on that, assuming, again, that it's not just a very super known feature that everyone knows about. Uh, look at that. If Tom Rochelle didn't know about it, Tom's been using GarageBand Mac for a long time. So hopefully that will be cool. <laughs> uh, oh, no, Peter's going to be more Mac and less iOS. No, I don't think so at all. Um, I think this this song I'm trying to do mostly on Mac just because I want to learn. Uh, but when, it's, it's funny. As soon as I'm like, oh, I've got an idea, I just grab my iPhone and then I just try to go with my iPad. Like it's, I'm a creature of habit and it's definitely not going to be something that's going to replace that. Uh, but yeah, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a, um, a tutorial on this. And uh, yeah, it is a very streamlining feature for sure. Alrighty. Uh, did I see some questions? I think I saw an extra question here. Uh, no. Oh, here it is from Murray, and you even put it in. Uh, you even put it in in caps, which is good. Uh, are the App Store guitar amps that you uh, are the App Store guitar amps that you can buy better than the stock amps on GB iOS, or just different? Uh, so just different. And final, like when I was doing my free apps of the year, and we talked about Tonebridge. I mentioned it there, and every time I mention Tonebridge, or I mention Mixbox, or I mention uh, any any apps amp sims. Uh, Bias, FX, uh, Stark, whatever it is, 
they're not necessarily better. So the the song I did, New Beginning, I recorded in GarageBand iOS, and I just threw the the stock guitar amps. In fact, we can take a listen. Let's let's jump over. Since I have since I have my iPad and everything set up here, uh, oh, you know what it is. <laughs> It's still called just Songtember 2020. I'm like, where, where is where is New Beginning? You know what? I, I've never actually renamed it from Songtember 2020. But if we come into Songtember 2020 and we come in here, not to my Mac, but to my boom, boom, iPad. Uh, yeah, you can see here that I put them here, the, the two guitar sounds, and they're soloed here. So I think that they sound pretty epic. And these are just using your standard, your standard amp sounds, right? And I think they're good. And you bring them into the track. So I didn't bother. I didn't bother changing those around and putting them somewhere else. I think I did use some Tone Bridge for, for one of the... Yeah, for this, for this solo, I used Tone Bridge. So I added that to just a regular audio track so I could get a bit of a Pearl Jam kind of tone here. Uh, this one. But yeah, uh, don't be afraid to use the stock amp sims and the stock plugins. Um, the same with like, I use the compressor, the compressor and the visual EQ, the standard reverb, the standard delays. You don't always need to get fancy. I think sometimes the temptation is to get carried away and to just jump in and try and you know, find new things. You're like, oh, if, if it costs 10 bucks, it must be better than the one that's free. It's not always the case. In fact, sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes the more fancy stuff doesn't work as well. And you actually go, the simpler you go, uh, the better sound you get. Excuse me. That's why they have a mixer. On the weekend, we had a show and we were discussing um, mixer versus audio interface. I think it was, who was it? Was it Ed Zed? Someone, someone had a question and we we're talking mixer versus interface. And uh, yeah, I said, the beauty bar, beautiful part about a mixer is you can fade out and fade back in. So you can very quickly bring yourself in and out. And you can do things like have your iPad there and being plugged into a different channel, as well as having my Mac coming through here. I could have my iPhone too if I wanted to. I can play my guitar and my mics through here. So mixers for the win, yeah? They are cool. Uh, let's uh, let's come uh, further up and down. Uh, uh, Logic Remote does work with GD Mac. Yeah, uh, I actually just downloaded Logic Remote. Now, I may even try it on the stream today. Again, another reason for you to check out the stream. I'll be playing around with this project, uh, but I think I downloaded it here. Yeah, there it is, Logic Remote. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't installed it or done anything with it yet, but Logic Remote would like to access your devices. Yep, select the application to control. Yeah, so look at that. It's got there. Can you see that? No, it's too bright. But it says Pete's Mac Mini. So I can control my Mac Mini with Logic Remote. If I tap on that one, let's just let's just set it up now, shall we? Oh, and GarageBand has popped up a thing here. Let's show you what it's saying. Uh, it's saying what's well, it's over on the other screen. Can I bring it here? No, it won't it won't go to the other page. Uh, but it says uh, XS wants to connect to GarageBand, which is the name of my phone. I'm gonna say connect, and there you go. It's uh, it's connected. So we've now got uh, let's come over here. Now I've got this Logic Remote, and you can see there that it's it's because the input is the mixer going into GarageBand right now. You can see there that I've got that, and you've got like record buttons and play and things. So this is really cool. So you can have this sitting in front of you, and if you're doing vocal takes or if you're doing um, guitar takes or whatever, this is like a little channel strip, and this controls your Mac. Uh, and this is great if you're away from your Mac. Like say I wanted to go into that cupboard, you can't see it, but there's a cupboard there. If I wanted to go in there to record a vocal take, as long as I had a long enough XLR cable, all I need to do is take this with me and I can actually have my record button and my, my transport controls and everything with me. So yeah, it's called Logic Remote, but it's kind of misleading because it works on your i, it works on GarageBand Mac as well. And as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can control your stuff from your other stuff. I know, I'm sorry. The, the, world, of, uh, the world of GarageBand uh, Mac is, is enticing. I, I admit it. I, I see what the draw card is now. <laughs> All righty, let's see if we've got any other questions before we finish off with our last couple of bits. There you go. Uh, yeah, Mark's downloaded it, but hasn't tried it yet. 
<laughs> Jade, yeah, you better get out of bed for your show. Yeah, Jade has a show coming up next, and I think, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think you confirmed this, Jade. You're going to be talking about the Lurson Mastering Console. It's going to be an excellent show. Uh, you, you do want to jump over and uh, and go to Jade's show. So uh, please drop a link, Jade, shortly, and then yeah, just before we finish, and make sure that if you're into mastering, if you're into creating music, and you want to get the best out of your music, uh, jump over to Jade's channel. I think uh, it'll be a fun show today, an interesting show. Michael Cope is in the house, uh, says, so thankful I discovered your channel this year. Love your content, always relevant, useful. I bought an AG2020 on your recommendation too. Thanks. No, thanks to you, Michael, and thank you for the donation. It really does help. Should we do the joke? People are getting sick of the joke, but uh, your donations help keep the lights on. Without your help, we look like this. <laughs> With your help, this is what we look like. So uh, you know, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, for your support and for everyone. I've got donations come through. So uh, Deep Gravity got a donation from Yuri. I'm going to forget a bunch of people. A uh, bunch of people have provided donations, and I do thank you for that, uh, as well as uh, doing super chats here, as well as supporting me on Patreon, as well as buying gear from the Gear Guide, as well as buying T-shirts and merch. Oh, speaking of merch, uh, we'll just take a quick quick sidestep and side note here because. If you don't already own your very own Studio Live Today t-shirt, you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash merch right now. That will take you straight into my merch store. It's also linked in the description of this video. It's right here on YouTube. But you can jump over here to the merch store. It looks like this. You can grab yourself your optimizing performance or your Studio Live Today mugs, t-shirts, and hoodies. And guess what? If you use the code CARROTS right now, C-A-R-R-O-T-S, 20% off. That is the <laughs> that's the biggest discount I've, I've ever given off the merch here. In fact, I don't think I make much much uh, margin on that anymore with 20% discount. But I don't care because I just want to I want to share the love and uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel and look cool at the same time, you can grab the big retro logo shirt there. You can grab the smaller logo shirt with the rainbow logo on there or of course your hoodies and your mugs. Coffee tastes better out of a Studio Live Today mug. That's uh, that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. So there you go. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Brad Example says, uh, I've been waiting to actually catch a q and I have no space left on my iPad 32 gig and I don't know why. Uh, I have no pics or vids, maybe only six songs with no virtual instruments. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm trying to watch every video you have about space. I can't find a solution. So space is, uh, is a challenge, especially when you're on 16 or 32 gig. I hear you. Um, but yeah, the, the key is there to go into your settings and to check your space. In fact, we can probably do it now. I'll do it now here because it is an important one. And if you're using GarageBand, you need, you got to have enough space. As uh, anyone like the Foo Fighters, their original album, the song Enough Space, never seem to be enough space. Apparently he wrote that about his first iPad. True story. Just don't look it up. Because <laughs> it's not that true. Uh, let's uh, let's jump in and grab my iPad. I'll just make sure I've got no no settings here on the screen that you aren't allowed to see. Or that I don't want you to see. All right, I think we're cool. So if we come here to my settings, they look like this. If you go into settings and general, you want to go to your iPad storage. I will again just flick over here and then press the button because I can't remember what it shows here. Uh, yeah, you're gonna feel sad about this because um, I've got the <laughs> I've got the opposite problem. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a 512 gigabyte iPad Pro and I'm only using 72 gigabytes of it. So uh, yeah, but I still am using that much. So what, what you do is once you've done this, it will start populating this. Now it takes a little while to do this. As you can see, it's got you know 1.94 gigabytes there for iCloud Drive. It'll start populating out all of these, but these are in order of the apps that are using the most space. So we can see here, Audio Share, I'm using 17 gigabytes, and that's because I store all of my audio files within the audio share folder, as well as all the video files that I transfer back and forth to do the shows and to do my video editing. So my audio share folder is always really big. So uh, that is one to consider. Yeah, there you go, it started, there you go, they're all populated. So this is the way you do, you come in here, you make sure that we've got this. I would put things like auto delete old conversations if you're using iMessage, make sure that that's enabled if you're running out of space. GarageBand's using quite a bit here, and as you go in there, you can see the different projects that are using more. So you may be able to remove and delete some of those projects that are using more. You can offload any apps, which means it uh, removes them from your storage. But when you need them again, iCloud Drive will just re-add them when you go to use them. And uh, things like Facebook and YouTube. It's a good idea to go into those every now and then. I don't use them much on my iPad, so they're not up here in the top section. But on your iPhone in particular, see how YouTube's 216 megabytes here? 
as you use YouTube, let's, in fact, let's check my phone because the more you use YouTube, I use YouTube on my phone a buttload. And if I go to iPhone storage here, we're probably going to see a different story with the YouTube because hold that thought. See how it is 200. Oh, it's, it's changing. It's changing as we go. You get to see all my embarrassing apps on here, don't you? I've lost, I've lost you. Where are you, YouTube? Come in, YouTube. Did it go up? Did it reach? Oh, no, there it is. 216.5. YouTube on my iPhone. Maybe they've improved it. Yeah, so on my iPhone, I did this again recently. It's 339.8 on my iPhone. So it's added a mystery random 150 megabytes. And that's things that I may have downloaded. That's cache of old videos that I've watched that I don't need anymore. It's just a bunch of crap. So the only way to fix this is to delete the app and reinstall it iOS is smart. It'll remember your passwords and things. You don't have to worry too much about that. So YouTube and Facebook, delete them, reinstall them, uh, remove any of the files that you don't need anymore. So you can zip them up. I've got videos on the channel about how to zip up and back up files to things like Google Drive and Dropbox and OneDrive and all the others. So just make sure that you're managing your files by backing up as much as you possibly can. Uh, yeah, I know. And it's a bit embarrassing, Greg, that I have 512 gigabytes because I don't, I'm not using it all. I, I thought I would be, but I still haven't stopped using my phone for all my video. I thought I would do all my video editing on the iPad, but as it turns out, I like to walk around and edit videos. So I'm still using the, I'm still using the iPhone for that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Empty the cache and, uh, yeah, sometimes uninstalling and reinstalling some of those apps is a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there you go. So up next for, for Jade is uh, is how to uh, app on iOS, the Lursen Mastering Console. Is it worth the dollars? The reason I've never looked at it is I'm always overwhelmed by the dollars, but Jade has found that there are some short-term subscription options that may actually be super awesome for folks releasing songs, EPs, albums. So I'm definitely going to be checking that one out in 10 minutes. You should be as well. Let's uh, jump in and we've got 10 minutes left in the show. Let's jump over it. What do we got to go? Uh, yeah, so the tip of the week we've already covered there. We've only got a couple of things left. Now, the the resource of the week, no, other way around, the app of the week. And I didn't check in advance if I've actually got it even installed on this iPad. But yes, I do. Okay. So the app of the week that we're going to be looking at is, oh no, you know what? Oh, it has. It's it's intelligently flipped. <laughs> there you go. It's intelligently flipped around. I just need to I need to do it sideways because uh, for me it isn't flipped. It's still sideways on my on my uh, thing here. Uh, so this is Visibel, and Visibel is an app from Clevcrand. Now, uh, how much is it costing at the moment? Uh, I haven't actually checked that, and I should have before this. Let's uh, let's jump over to here. Yes, you can go buy buy some t-shirts. Uh, if we go to App Store Visibel. And see what it is. Here it is. Visibel Video Audio Visualizer. $14.99, which is Australian dollar bucks. Uh, there you go. $14.99. And uh, I think you'll find out. Anyway, it's about 10 bucks or 15 bucks or 20 bucks. What is it? Well, it is a visualizer. If we come over here, it helps you create cool little videos. Now, if you've been on the Create, Record, Release Facebook group or GarageBand users, a lot of iOS creators use Visibel and uh, you can create yourself something like this, yeah? So this is what I use to create these sort of things. So what you do, you can add in any sort of artwork. So here I've got a background image here. I've got my album artwork here. I can put the name of the track and my name here in text. And you can add things like these cool, funky audio waveforms. Now there's a whole heap of controls down here that you can change the size of your text, the color of your text, um, the, the offset of everything, excuse me. I have a frog in my throat today. I blame not enough coffee. Or too much coffee, I forget. Uh, so yeah, you've got a heap of options here. Now, in terms of functionality, you can see here, it's, it's a little, you've got to kind of use a lot of these sliders and it's a little bit like learning a different programming language. So the learning curve takes you a while to get used to it, but I promise you it's worth it because you can actually create some really cool videos. And instead of spending a lot of time creating lyric videos or creating something else or just having a static image, you get something that's going to be interesting. And you can share these out and put them on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, you can do that. If we come in here, uh, I've got some other projects saved here. So there's all my maybe ones. If we go back to say no apologies, there you go. So I've got the original album artwork and this one, I've got different coloring. So if we hit play 
And you can very easily, once you've got one, you can use that project as a basis for all your other ones. And you can see that I've got my own style here. So if we go back in time, let's go to my song Sin. Uh, oh, see, I've used that and I've changed it. So this was originally Sin, but I changed it to Your Opinion in that way. But the thing is, there's a heap of other themes in here that you can use. So if you don't like that one, you can have just the cover. You can have something like this. It's a background. Look, all this stuff. Snow. you got the ring. The ring's actually pretty cool. Uh, let's throw the ring on here. <laughs> Obviously, you can tweak all the colors and uh, and all the, the, the images. But look at this one. you got a cool circular thing there. Yeah? Everybody talks too much. They like to hear the... So yeah, super customizable, super changeable, a heap of different themes, and then you can export these as high quality video files with your audio file in there attached, of course, and then upload these. So yes, Visibel, W-I-Z-I-B-E-L, that one there. Uh, it's yeah, it's just it's simple and it's it's effective. And again, I've been using it for a long time, and a lot of folks use it. And uh, there you go, Joey Helpish loves it. Love this app, worth every penny. And I know I've, on my video, so I've got a complete video of this, which I'll link down in the description. On my video, people are like, oh, cool app, a shame it costs money. You know what? Uh, I don't begrudge the folks at Clevgrand spending all that time making this cool app that we can use to, to create visualization videos and charging a bit of cash. Like, uh, it's, it's really worth it. Uh, and you, you might say, Pete, you get all this stuff for free. I don't get everything for free. I do buy a lot of apps as well. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, it, basically, if I don't talk about it, it means that it's not a great app. So rather than be the downer, I won't talk about what I don't use. I'll talk about what I do use. That's why if you're ever looking at this channel and you're like, why is everything so positive? Why are you talking about these apps? Well, A, there is no affiliate program on the app store anymore. So I have zero vested interest in whether you buy these apps or not. It doesn't affect me in the slightest, especially financially. Uh, and B, yeah, I'll only talk about positive things that I actually enjoy. So if you if there's an app you don't see on Studio Live today and you're wondering why I haven't reviewed it, the same with gear. If you're wondering why I haven't reviewed it, it's because I have tried it and I don't like it or it's just completely off my radar. But I would rather tell you what does work and what you should use than to uh, than to yeah, throw things under the bus because they may work for you. But I check it out. If it works for my workflow or if I think it might be something cool that folks here may want to check out, then uh, I will uh, I will review it. Uh, we've got more stuff. So you, you're going to have things uh, covered all day here. So uh, Joey is doing a show after Jade's show, how to song testing out the studio built-in mics on the new M1 MacBook. There you go. And then re remixing one of my songs tomorrow. There you go. You've got you got all sorts of things going on here. We've got a bit of, got a bit of a, uh, a routine, a bit of a, a schedule of shows. Uh, so straight after this one, you can jump over and check out. There you go. She's just uh, timed it perfectly. Up next, how to app on iOS. I'll be looking at the Lursa master Mastering Console and seeing if it's worth it. There you go, Michael. It's 14 bucks Canadian for Visibel. Uh, yeah, like I say, it's a cool app. If, you, if you're ever at that point where you're like, hey, I've got this audio, how do I share it on social media without going to a heap of effort? The answer is one word. It's Visibel. All right. Uh, final thing, we're going to look at our resource of the week. And this week, I'm going to give you a handy dandy little guide that I put together that will help you. If you've got new gear this Christmas and you're like, oh, I don't know what cables to buy. How do I plug this into this? How do I plug that into that? Well, I've got the solution for you. It is my cable guide on Studio Live Today. Yes, it is this. Go to studiolivetoday.com slash cables. Simple as that, and here you'll find my complete cable guide. So right at the top here, click on that one. That's going to take you to my video. So hey Google, talk. it'll give you an ad for some reason. Oh, I'm not signed in. There you go. I, I I never know what my ads are. Now I do. Let's uh let's turn down the volume. We'll watch we'll watch this ad just because I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued about what's advertised on my the Wiggles. I get the Wiggles on my ad. <laughs> the Wiggles on my ad. I love it. There you go. It must the, the perfect wiggly path, the Nest Hub Max. There you go. Go Google. Uh, so yeah, so here is my cable guide video. In the home studio, but you don't know which cable to use. Well, in this video, I'm going to break it down and give you my complete guide to home studio cables. So let's go.
Let's go, little man. Uh, so yeah, so you can check that one out. If you come back here to the guide, we've then got, I've split these up into the types of things. So you can go to, you know, straight to Sweetwater's Cable Guide Finder. You can go to Amazon in your country to, to grab cables, or I've got all the different types here. So this is kind of the companion to the video. You can see headphone cables here. You've got speaker cables, how to connect up your monitor speakers. If you've got a new pair of nice monitors, you've got your microphones here, your XLR or your TS microphone connections there. Keyboard synth, e-drums, guitars, phones or tablets, mixers, audio interfaces, converters and adapters that I find useful, and your USB data and power. So that is all there. And uh, as I said, you can watch the video and then it's got sections in that video too. So uh, if I'm if I'm a smart, and hopefully I am relatively smart, uh, I would have, oh yeah, there's, there's the merch by the way, uh, in the description, there you go. You've got all of the timestamps. So you can jump straight into that. So you're like, oh, I got an audio interface, but I got two pair of headphones. I want to get a headphone adapter. You can jump straight to that section of the video. And there you go. It'll show me showing you the two different types of double adapters for headphones. And then you can jump into the link and pick one up. So if you've got gear, if you're uh, trying to connect your gear to your other gear and you don't know the thing you need, then that is what you need. Excuse me a moment. I'm very sorry for the uh, for the frog in my throat here. We've got a few folks who've jumped in here late, so we'll say good day to them. Uh, we've got my wave coming in from the UK. Hello to you, and uh, I've got uh, who else did I see there? I thought I saw someone else. No, there you go. Uh, hello, thank you. And thank you to everyone for being here. We are right on time, so I am going to finish up in just 30 seconds. Uh, but yeah, hope you've, hopefully you found the show interesting and fun. Hit the thumbs up if you did and uh, jump over to the resources. They'll all be linked down in the description straight after the show. If you're watching on the replay, drop me a comment below. Tell me your history, your GarageBand origin story. I'd love to have the comments filled up with how you got into GarageBand. When did you start? What device did you use? Use, I think that could be a lot of fun. I'll jump down there and do mine in just a moment, but hey, you can watch the channel to find that out. All right, jump on over to Jade's channel now. How to app the Lurst and Mastering Console. Going to be epic. I want to find out about it. I will see you there. Please be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Keep creating 